Hi everybody, Shelly here. Today I'm bringing you along on my photo shoot to American Frontier Productions in Kansas. I'll be shooting outside in daylight, no fancy equipment. Just the sunlight or the lack there of it is all I have to work with. I'll show you how to make the best of bad lighting and how different the photos can look when you actually have good lighting. I'm taking reference photos that I'm going to turn into fine art, figurative works, and a portrait or two. Plus, I'm going to share some exciting news with you. So let's get into it. Hey, we're here at American Frontier Productions. We've got the beautiful model Victoria and we're about to do a photo shoot. Do you paint portraits from photos? If yes, have you made taking your own photos part of your creative process? I believe since I started taking my own photos to paint from, my work has improved and became more my own. Now, let me set the record straight. I am not a photographer. I have little interest in photography, especially the parts about setting up the camera. I know just enough to do to, to almost get the shots I want. I rely on Photoshop and Lightroom to get my photos the rest of the way there, or at least a bit closer to my vision. We spent two days shooting here. The first day was sunny in the morning, then the clouds rolled in with a bit of rain, but the second day was bright and sunny with an occasional cloud rolling through. Now here's something to know. I have been writing down these photo setups for months before getting to the photo shoot, so I was totally ready with some photo ideas but I also allowed the events of the day to give me new ideas. So basically I'm saying I went there with a relaxed plan with some wiggle room. So let's get into my first setup. This is early the first day. It's overcast, which is not ideal lighting. It leaves things kind of dull and flat. You don't get the pop of the colors like you do when the sun is out, but it also doesn't create strong shadows so you can have a little more freedom in positioning your subjects. This also allowed me to shoot from pretty much any angle. So I got up on a ladder and shot from above. I shot down below. I shot in different um, left and right sides to the scene. And it just really didn't make too much difference because of that overcast flat lighting. We thought it'd be a good idea to get our male subject into the red long john underwear, especially since the lighting was so flat. This would really help to bring the scene alive and give a good pop of color against all that kind of dull muted green. So we had the idea that our subject, our male subject would be the one getting tied up and laid across faux railroad tracks. So when I do the painting, I'll paint as if he's laying on railroad tracks. But I also thought it'd be a good idea to get some close-up shots of the faces and, you know, have options as far as piecing together. So a lot of times I'll composite different photos together for my final painting reference. So I got some great shots despite the overcast lighting, but I also knew I could uh, take care of that in Photoshop. So I pulled up the photo here you see in Photoshop and all you have to do is get the camera raw filter on and then click auto. I mean, it couldn't be easier. With the auto setting in Photoshop, it does a great job of just instantly letting you see the subjects and you know taking care of the shadows and the highlights. A lot of times with photography, um, you're going to have a situation where your highlights end up showing in the photograph lighter than they would in real life and the shadows end up showing darker than they would in real life. And you can see here how the AI in Photoshop instantly knew that and took care of it with the auto setting. So if you're not a Photoshop aficionado, don't worry. All you have to do is click auto and your lighting situation will be taken care of beautifully. So here's another thing you can do to combat this um, dull overcast lighting. So we have a structure here and I can see that the lighting is still not great with the subject out in front of the structure. So I move him inside just by the opening of the door and look, it's a huge difference. I mean, the lighting instantly changes the glow of the wood inside and this creates a single point lighting source that you can see just to the right of the subject's face. And here's the painting that resulted. So here's the exciting news I have to share with you. Earlier this year, I became an instructor with RTY Art Academy. And the RTY stands for Rebecca Tillman Young. She's an amazingly talented artist and she's going to be giving you a free workshop. Yes, that's right, free. 
and it's going to teach you some of the fundamentals in painting portraits and oils. She's an amazing teacher, and I'm gonna go ahead and play the um, promo video for you, and if you're interested in joining the free workshop, which I highly suggest you do, the link will be in the description below this video. Hi there, I'm Rebecca T.Y., creator of the best-selling course, Lifelike Oil Portraits in 90 Days, and I'd like to invite you to my free online workshop, Lifelike Oil Portraits. In this workshop, over the course of a week, I'll be teaching you my three-step formula that will help you to improve your oil portraits instantly, even if you're just getting started. These are surprisingly simple techniques that have helped over 20,000 of my students to see dramatic improvements from their very first tries. You'll learn how to use a simple technique to set your paintings up for success from the very first brushstroke so it becomes easy to capture an accurate likeness in every portrait. You'll learn a color mixing method to help you accurately mix rich, beautiful colors so your paintings feel like they're alive and vibrant instead of flat and two-dimensional. And I'm gonna teach you a step-by-step -step process that will help you finish more paintings in less time and with better results than you ever thought possible. As my students will tell you, with these tools and techniques and a bit of practice, you'll surprise yourself with what you can create. So if you've ever wanted to paint portraits but you haven't quite known where to start or you've been frustrated with your results, not quite achieving your portrait painting goals, this workshop is for you. I promise you're gonna love it. So if you wanna see an immediate improvement in your oil portrait painting and have a great time doing it, join me for the Lifelike Oil Portrait Workshop and see just what a difference it can make for you. Sometimes it's more about capturing your subject and getting the action and the clarity of that shot. And you can take that subject and understand the anatomy and the perspective and turn it into a painting that has nothing <laughs> to do with the actual photograph you took other than just setting up the subject and getting the perspective correct. Remember, with overcast lighting, just focus on getting interesting shots, capturing action, and then you can fix all that later on in Photoshop. Like I showed you, you've got the one click auto button and it'll take care of everything for you. But then if you want to be a little bit more creative in Photoshop, you can play around with those sliders. With overcast lighting, sometimes it can help to change locations. And in this situation, we are going for higher ground. We're actually walking up. It doesn't look too steep here, but it was quite a big uh, hill we went up to the top of to catch these shots. I mean, look how much different it is shooting in this direction and the light completely changed. Now I did hit the auto button on these photos in Photoshop, but the location change was key. Now for this setup, I did wait until the sun was to the one side, not quite so much overhead directly. Even though it's overcast, it is important to understand where the sun is in the horizon. So this way it was more to the left of my subjects, creating a little bit of depth in the face, giving me more volume to work with, you know, because you want to have some shadows on your subject's face in order to have a an easier time creating your painting. Otherwise you have to create these shadows from you know your imagination or from your own knowledge, which can be done. But if you're newer, it's better to have it there. So here you can see my images directly from the camera and then I'm clicking that auto button in Photoshop and voila, they're ready. It's so cool the way that uh, Photoshop's so smart and makes it easy to you know, relight your images. So here we go. I've got a couple to show you. I'm going to uh, paint these as if they're playing tug of war over a little creek. It'll be so cute. On overcast days, take your subjects inside. This sets up the one point lighting situation. It's kind of similar to how I showed you before with the cowboy going into the barn and using the opening as our one point light. So here we're using a window actually inside of a room and it's working out quite well. Now I noticed I couldn't place my subject directly in front of the window. It was better to have the window to the side of their faces. Here we are, day two, lots of sunshine. Hey, we're here at American Frontier Productions and we've got our beautiful model Kathy and her horse Woodrow and we're setting up our first shot for the day. With strong sunlight, it's preferable to not shoot in the middle of the day when it's directly overhead. So you can see here, there's nice shadows being created to the side of our models. 
So the sun is positioned perfectly. It's not too high in the sky yet. The sun is really making these images glow. Here's a couple of the shots that we did. Uh, with working with two models, I shot each model separately and then I combined them together. As I mentioned earlier, I had some uh, thoughts prepared ahead of time and one of them was to shoot the images of a girl band. So I put together here my old timey western girl band. We have our washboard being played, of course a fiddle mm -hmm. and a banjo. When shooting in bright sunlight with your subjects wearing hats with large brims like here, it's good to get down a little bit low underneath the brim shooting up into the face. I added a dancer. And then we changed locations. We went out in the full sun next to a pseudo campfire. And again, I'm shooting down low so I can get up into the faces. And by the end of it all, we were having a blast and everybody was into the photo shoot. <laughs> now it's later in the day. This subject came about um, by chance. I saw this model dressed for a, another artist um, setup and I asked her to come find me when she was finished and I took her over to this area and we began shooting for my portrait setup. So in Photoshop Raw we have a close-up portrait shot here. Now what I wanted to show you is when you are painting a portrait you may want to print out or have two or three versions one where you're going to see the image with all the good contrast. Maybe you pull up the contrast and you really show some of this dark area and then some of these highlights. But if you need to get a little more information, let's say you want to see more of what's happening in the shadow, you slide the shadow slider over to the lighter area. And now look, I can see all of the detail in this shadow here on the right side of her head. But when I'm actually painting the painting, I'm not going to paint all that detail. But if I want to see what's going on and maybe highlight some areas, then I can do that. Because as I mentioned before, whenever you take a photograph, it shows the shadow areas much darker than what they are in real life. And it accentuates the highlights to be much lighter than they are in real life. So here we have the highlights darkened down quite a bit. But if we wanted to see those brightened up, we could turn those up. We can take them way down. Uh, you can definitely, you know, play around with different versions. So maybe a really blown out lighter version of your image <laughs> or, you know, one that really shows all the information in the shadows. But when I work on a painting, I tend to keep things pretty contrasty. And then I go ahead and set up my portrait painting reference. This is perfect lighting shot at the golden hour. Now you want to get different positions. You want to back up and get some of the full image. You want to zoom in and get some close images, change head positions, try adding in props, and you'll end up with some beautiful portraits. Whether overcast lighting or bright sunlight, just know you can get great shots to use as your painting references. So never fear and remember there's always Photoshop or Lightroom to help salvage a picture that looks to you like perhaps it's not the best, the shadows may be too dark, you can't see the face as good. Just know that there's some post editing that can happen that will bring that picture to life and you'll be able to paint it beautifully. <laughs> be sure to go into the description and get signed up for the free workshop with Rebecca and I will see you in the next one.